Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. Over 2,500 years ago, Hippocrates, who is the Greek physician, also known as the father of medicine, had a really amazing statement. And that was, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. Now we fast forward to current day and we have to think to ourselves, how is it that we went so off the rails when it comes to recognizing that nutrition is part of health? And it is alarming when you see the lack of nutritional understanding and nutritional training when it comes to traditional physicians, um, those in healthcare in general. And it really is quite a shame that when you look and you say, goodness, 2,500 years ago, and they had it right. And now you see where we're at now with all of the different chronic disease states and still not being able to connect those dots. I mean, Hippocrates, for the most part, has been largely neglected. I mean, that that philosophy, that understanding of the importance of nutrition, the importance of superfoods, the importance of really understanding how those vitamins and minerals and fats were working within the body to maintain our health. And you look now at the way we practice medicine and in the traditional sense, it's much more about drugs than it is foods. And so food as thy medicine has really just kind of gone out the window and you don't have to look too far or too hard to figure out, you know, why this trend continues when we recognize that throughout, not just the United States, but technically throughout the the world, nutrition and medical education is incredibly lacking. And I'm going to give you some statistics just here in the United States, but then we're also going to talk about why foods matter and why looking at foods that are considered to be quote unquote superfoods, why incorporating those into your diet on a regular basis can be so helpful at that cellular level for all aspects of our you know functionality. So I'm Amanda Williams, MD, MPH, and today I want to talk about really the, the lack of understanding when it comes to nutrition. And when we talk about nutrition, we're not talking about putting someone on a you know low salt diet or a low sugar diet. It's just the basic wherewithal of what is it that nutrition is and why is it that we have basically kind of pulled so far away from understanding that. I mean, most people have heard the the saying, an apple a day keeps the doctor away. That's not just, you know, this far-fetched thought. We understand that from our foods, our foods can either make us or break us, which is why I continuously talk about the Mediterranean diet time and time again, because we know that if we go back in time and we go back to Hippocrates and we're thinking about foods, we know that those foods that were incorporated into his philosophy of health were from that Mediterranean region, hence he is a Greek physician or was a Greek physician. And we know that there is a large body of research data that suggests that the Mediterranean diet is by far superior to any other form of diet out there. And it's been shown time and time again to have all of these different health promoting effects across the spectrum. When we look at healthy aging, when we look at chronic disease management, when we look at the state here um, in the in the US where people adhere to a standard American diet and you see the really alarming rate of growth of things like obesity and heart disease and diabetes and all of these different things that we know are directly correlated and linked with improper 
dietary intake of good foods. So it makes me just, you know, want to scream from from the rooftops when you really recognize how far we have pulled away from understanding why it is that foods really are at the forefront of our health. So when we look at medical students, when we look at practicing physicians, and we turn to them as being the experts in our health, and you know, keeping us on the, the right track, we have to be aware of the fact that these are people who have not had any type of a background in training when it comes to foods. They know a lot about medicines, but when it comes to foods, this is not their forte. And I can speak personally about this, going to medical school, understanding that in my medical school training, we did not have any type of a focus on nutrition in the sense of actual foods. Yes, you cover quickly, you know, low salt diet for those who have hypertension. You talk about low sugar intake for those who have diabetes or prediabetes. You talk about a low fat diet for someone who has cholesterol. You talk about, you know, potential vitamin deficiencies that could impact health or be linked to a particular disease. But that's where it's limited. You don't jump into it in any further degree. And I think that that is something that really should be addressed. And there are some medical schools out there that are trying to do this, but there was a study that they they did, and it was the state of nutrition education in U.S. medical schools. And they were assessing um, over 130 different U.S. medical schools to see how much nutrition is actually taught in the actual curriculum. And what they found was it's basically not much at all. The requirement that most United States medical schools set up in their core curriculum is to require 25 hours. You're not hearing me wrong. 25 hours of nutrition education. 25 hours through four years of medical school is laughable. Even if you were to say 40 hours, that's still not enough. When we know that poor nutrition contributes to the development of most chronic diseases and even many acute conditions. So the fact that doctors in training, medical students, resident physicians, current practicing physicians have really no idea how to manage someone's health when it comes to the foundation of what Hippocrates was speaking of all those years ago is really a crying shame. Now, this particular study that was done, it was done through the Department of Nutrition, through the School of Medicine at um, University of North Carolina in conjunction with Harvard Medical School. And their findings were incredibly alarming from the over 90% of the medical schools that responded back to their survey. They found that the median amount of hours that most medical students were receiving when it came to any type of a nutrition um, training or education was roughly about 15 hours. And they were able to determine that, you know, one of the the major breakdowns is that each medical school is basically on their own to determine how nutrition education is incorporated into that four-year curriculum. And in doing that, they, they take a lot of focus off of nutrition. Clearly, that is the case when you have, you know, over 130 medical schools that were responding back to the survey and 90% of them are saying, yeah, we can't even really squeeze in 15 hours of actual nutritional training. And we look and say to ourselves, okay, well, no wonder why the state of health, not just here in the United States, but throughout the world is really so poor. And if we don't 
realize why it is that foods matter and we don't go back to the basics and we look at things like superfoods and we think to ourselves, well, what in the world is a superfood? Well, these are going to be foods that really across the spectrum are giving you a really good abundant amount of the the key nutrients. So vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, protein, healthy fats, the right blend of carbohydrates. And there's not one single food out there that can offer every aspect of full nutrition, but it's when you adhere this all together to that Mediterranean diet, this is where you gain all of that benefit because we realize that all of these different foods, when you look at superfood lists, um, for example, when you look at berries, when you look at fish, and we're talking more of the, the fatty fish, ones that have a high omega-3 content, things like salmon, uh, mackerel, herring, anchovy, sardines, certainly we know have a high omega-3 content to them. Looking at green leafy vegetables, nuts, you know, across the, the board when we're looking at almonds and pecans, walnuts, these are all a really great way to kind of superfood up your diet. Looking at olive oil, for example, um, yogurt, we certainly know is a really wonderful way when it comes to balance or homeostasis within the gut microbiome and cruciferous vegetables, all of the the Brussels sprouts and the broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, all of these things that we know really can heighten our body's ability to function properly. And so if you're not hearing this from your physician, well, there's probably a reason why, because they're not trained in that. I know for myself, when I finished medical school, the thought was, well, just eat healthy quote unquote, eat healthy. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean, okay, just don't go to, you know, fast food every single day? Does that mean, you know, try to just stop at the grocery store on your way home from work and pick something up that was, you know, pre-made, but you somehow consider that to be healthier than if you went to a restaurant? I mean, what is eating healthy really mean? And if you ask most physicians, they did another study where they actually surveyed cardiologists. And you would think a cardiologist should know something about nutrition. That, you know, a lot of the the breakdown of cardiovascular disease comes down to food-based, you know, and you would think that they would have a really strong foundational understanding of that, but yet they do not. Because like I said, it's lacking in medical school. It does not carry on into residency. It's not like, oh, well, once you're a resident physician, you're going to somehow get inundated with all of this nutritional education. No, that doesn't happen. And certainly when doctors get out and they are practicing in whatever specialty they, you know, so desire to, to go into, they're definitely not going into nutrition. And it's only a very small, minute number of practicing physicians and healthcare providers in this country that go on and do further training to actually really look at how foods impact the body. And this is a reason why, you know, when you look at all of the the studies that come out from these major universities that continue to show foods, health benefit, food, health benefit, this bad food, bad for the health, this is not new information. This has been around for thousands of years now, but yet the research is becoming more and more enforceful, but yet we are still missing the key point to that. There was a study that they did out of the Friedrich Alexander University, and they combined with some researchers here in the US, and they were looking at things like tea and coffee and chocolate and how these could actually be very beneficial in terms of, you know, targeting free radicals and finding that zinc itself that we can find in certain superfoods, you know, just natural zinc that's occurring in certain superfoods actually can work as this natural protection against superoxide. And we know superoxide do significant damage when we're talking about oxidative stress. We know all of these things. We see study after study that come out and continue to impress upon us that foods do matter. When you look just at the Mediterranean diet, for example, and you jump into the National Library of Medicine, I mean, there's thousands upon thousands of peer-reviewed clinical research studies showing that foods 
are linked to the prevention of chronic diseases. So the Mediterranean diet and that direct link to the prevention of chronic diseases. But yet you still don't hear this on a regular basis. It's usually just reactive medicine. I have this problem. Here's this drug. We need to get ourselves into that mindset where we start to be proactive in our own health and we start to take that initiative and we realize that we control a lot of our own health. There are many things that we cannot control. Obviously, you know, genetic predispositions, things like that, things in your environment that you cannot control, such as air pollution. If you live in a a metropolitan area, there's a lot of things that we do not have control over. But however, we do have a significant amount of control over the foods that we eat. So this is an area that when it comes to longevity, when it comes to chronic disease state management, that we have to start to take a hold of and be our own best health advocate. So when we're looking at different ways that we can incorporate in healthy foods into our diet, We can go with those superfoods. We can adhere to that Mediterranean diet, but we can also include different nutrients in terms of supplementation, such as the Reds HX and the Greens HX, which are packed with all of these high antioxidant nutrients coming from fruits and vegetables. So I definitely encourage you to go to our website and check that out. A scoop of the Reds HX, you can put that in with some of the yogurt. So we know that that yogurt beneficial for the gut microbiome, and then we you know, encompass that with all of these high antioxidant fruits and vegetables. And what's nice about both the greens HX and the reds HX is that they both contain a really lovely probiotic blend in them. So we have a ultimate phytonutrient program, um, which you can find on our website, which is a combination. It is getting the the Reds HX along with that Greens HX. And there's so many different ways that you can incorporate both of these into your routines. Certainly you can just take a scoop, add it in with water and, you know, drink it down that way. But we have many different recipes that actually utilize both of these different products. So if you're on our website and you go to our learn tab and you scroll down to you get to the recipes, you'll see all of these different recipes that incorporate in things such as the greens HX and the reds HX, different ways for you to make sure that you are getting an adequate exposure to all of these really powerful and important vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants that are coming from natural sources, coming from foods. We go back 2,500 years ago to Hippocrates and think once again, let food be thy medicine and medicine be thy food. It is not a hard stretch. And there was a a real interesting study, like an intervention study that they did over in Australia, where they had people who clearly weren't following a Mediterranean diet and they had them do this for six months. And at the end of six months of, you know, close adherence to the Mediterranean diet, they were able to see those clear indications of positive health changes. So I always say say to people, it is never too late to change up what you're doing. Our bodies are incredibly forgiving machines. And when we start to do the right things, it is amazing how quick our body can start to have that forgiveness and really start to optimize the way that it is functioning on an everyday basis. And that is all that I have for you for today. I want to thank you so much for tuning in to the Invite Health Podcast. Remember, you can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts or by visiting invitehealth.com slash podcast. Now do make sure that you subscribe and you leave us a review. You can follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Invite Health, and we will see you next time for another episode of the Invite Health Podcast.